everyone, welcome back to my channel. Today, we are going to be talking all about the new foundation from Hourglass. This is the Ambient Soft Glow Foundation. It retails for $58 and it comes in 32 different shades. So in today's video, I am going to be trying it on, kind of giving you guys my first impressions of it. I'm also going to be doing a 12 hour wear test on it. I will be wearing it throughout the day. I will take you guys outside, do a daylight check-in, zoom you guys in real close so you guys can see how it's wearing and how it looks. And then in the 12 hour check-in, I will zoom you guys in really, really close so you guys can really Really see how the foundation looks, how it performs, and how it wears on and off throughout the day. And also in the video, I will be swatching shade nine and shade seven, but I'm actually wearing shade nine right now. I will be sharing swatches of these shades next to other shades that I have in other foundations. Now for reference, up here on the screen is an image of my age, my skin type, what I like, what I dislike in foundations, my skin concerns, all of that. I feel like that information is really important for the audience to know what the person behind the camera likes and dislikes and what their skin concerns are because we all have different skin concerns and and with complexion products there's so many different variables when it goes to reviewing foundation products so I feel like that information is always really important I will also leave a list in the description box down below of popular foundations out on the market and what shades I wear in those foundations so you guys can get an idea of my shade reference so with all of that out of the way let's dive in to the information about this new foundation so like I mentioned this foundation retails for $58 it comes in 32 different shades it is a liquid vegan formula formula that has a natural finish. It's claiming to be long wearing. It's cruelty free and it also provides buildable medium coverage. It is described as a weightless liquid foundation that delivers buildable medium coverage with a light diffusing effect for up to 16 hours. It is inspired by the iconic ambient lighting collection. This foundation is infused with blurring spheres to minimize the look of imperfections for skin that looks more smooth, even and glowing. The transfer resistant formula is also resistant to humidity and sweat for flawless looking coverage that stays in place. Now, I have been in the humidity. I live in Utah. I just got back from vacation in Florida and it was really hot and humid there. So I understand that makeup definitely wears differently in the humidity versus the dry climate. Right now in Utah, it's really hot, but it's dry. So there's definitely a difference between that. So I won't be able to say whether this holds up in the humidity, but I will kind of give you guys my impression of it and my opinion on it and how it would possibly hold up in the humidity because that's a huge claim. I, based on my experience in Florida and being there for a month, and that's a big claim. I don't think that any foundation on the market could ever remotely last for 16 hours in the humidity, like all day, but in and out of the humidity, possibly, right? So that's all the details on it. I was really interested in this foundation because I do really like their ambient lighting powders. They do have really beautiful, beautiful powders. And also their translucent setting powder is one of my favorites. I have tested so many different powders out on the market and none of them look as beautiful as this one from Hourglass. And what I also love about it is the actual packaging itself. I don't waste this powder. When I open this, powder doesn't go everywhere. You tap on the back of it and it gives you the right amount just for the face. It doesn't go everywhere. And so I use this up and it lasts me a really long time, but it doesn't dry my skin out. It doesn't look bad and kind of crepey over my wrinkles and stuff. So it's one of my favorite powders. So I was really curious about this foundation from Hourglass because a lot of their complexion products, they've got it right. But their foundations for me has definitely been hit and miss. I wasn't a huge fan of the stick foundation. I know it was all the hype several years ago, uh, but it's not really been my favorite personally because it was a little bit too drying. Even though this is my favorite setting powder, I did not use it today and I won't be using any powders today throughout the day just because I wanted to see how the foundation will wear and how it looks on its own without powder because I know there's a lot of people out there that don't wear powder. So I wanted to just wear the foundation and, and test it and see how it wears. Now, typically you guys know that I like to wear my foundations for three or four days 
before doing a full review on it. But because this is such a highly anticipated foundation launch and so many of you guys are waiting on my video on it, I decided to do a one day 12 hour wear test, put up the video, I will continue to wear it. And then in an upcoming video, I'm gonna be doing a full face of new makeup. And in that video, I will use the foundation. And after wearing it for several days, I will let you guys know if my opinion has changed in that video versus this video. And if you guys are watching this video in the future, I will link that video in the description box down below. With all that out of the way, let's jump into the application and I will see you guys all in my next check-ins. So we finally have the foundation from Hourglass. Let's put it on, I'm so excited. I'm gonna go ahead and pin my hair back. I don't have the brush that was launched with this foundation, but I do have a Hourglass brush. So this I think is just called the Vanish brush, I believe. I will go ahead and use that, and then I also have a sponge. Typically how I like to apply foundations is I like to apply it all over the face with a brush, and then kind of press it into the skin with a sponge. If I only use a sponge, sometimes I run the risk of applying too much in one spot, and it seems like with a brush, I can get a smooth, more even application, and especially as I've aged, I just can't afford to have any patches that are too thick or too heavy with foundation. As I've gotten older, a thin, even layer is the best and it looks the best and it wears the best and it lasts the longest. That's pretty much the reason why I like to use a brush. So I bought shade seven and shade nine. And the reason I bought both shades is I felt like shade nine, even though the description was my match, the model, her complexion was darker than mine and I kept thinking, gosh, that might be too dark. So I decided to grab shade seven as well. That's shade nine and that actually looks light. Okay, the pictures are way off, you guys. That's shade nine. And that looks so much lighter in real life than it does in the images. So I'm not even gonna try shade seven. Shade seven is no way gonna work for me. That's shade seven. Shade seven, shade nine. Cannot believe the difference in Oh, online images drive me crazy. They really do because they just, it never, woo. Okay, we're so, gonna use shade nine. Okay, so that's a pump here on the back of my hand and I'm gonna dip the brush into it like this. I just go like this and then just start kind of blending it in. Now, I can already see that this has pretty good coverage, so I am going to spread that as far as I can spread it, which is the reason why I like to do a brush. A brush, I'm able to really spread it farther than I can with a sponge, and it just gives me a nice, even application. I mean, that went a really long way. Like, you do not need very much of this. So I'm gonna kind of buff this in. Now it feels like it's drying as I'm applying it. Um, it doesn't have that wet feeling like a lot of foundations do. It feels like it's kind of drying and setting down as I'm applying it and it looks really pretty. Before I move on to the forehead, I'm, I'm going to grab a tiny bit of the foundation on the sponge and then just make sure that I push it into the skin. It gives a little bit more of a skin-like finish. You kind of get the best of both worlds when applying with a brush and then like smoothing it out with a sponge. Okay, now I'm going to apply this on the forehead and spread it as far as I can spread it. Again, a little bit goes a really long way. And this is a good shade for me. So it's blending into my skin really pretty and it's matching my skin good. So if you are a shade match to me, this is a good shade. It kind of dries to like a powdery finish in a way. It does kind of feel that way. Like you can't, it's not tacky to the touch or anything like that. What I am gonna do is I'm gonna see if I can build up coverage because right now, I have a light medium coverage situation. So you can kind of see where some of my spots are still kind of coming through. This is claiming to be a buildable medium coverage, a uh, natural finish. So 
I would definitely say it's a natural finish. So I'm gonna grab just a tiny bit because this is really pigmented and I don't wanna get it too heavy. So I just wanna go over this textured area and see if I can get a nice medium coverage. That was better, right? Like, here's the thing. This is what I recommend. Already, based on just the texture of this foundation, I recommend putting an even layer all over the face, okay? And then going, and then like allowing it to tr kind of dry and set down, then go in with a tiny bit more to build up coverage. I don't recommend going in with a lot of coverage in the beginning, right? But I wouldn't recommend going in with a lot. Uh, when I say layer, I mean like the smallest layers because you really do not need a lot of this. This is a very pigmented formula. I mean, look how much I still have from that pump. So I probably used a half a pump, literally. Like you do not need very much of this and the smallest amount goes the longest way. And I feel like I got a pretty decent application and I feel like I got pretty decent coverage now. Like I did have to kind of build up the coverage in a few places, um, but I'm okay with doing that. I would rather build up coverage in a few places than apply too much. Really do not want to have this too thick in certain areas, especially over wrinkles. You have more like the orange pill skin, right? Like this area is kind of my how I know a foundation's gonna look good is if it looks good over this area. This is the area where I have texture. Right now I don't have texture. My skin is in a good place. I'm gonna knock on wood somewhere because I have not broke out since the end of May. And there are a few things I've been using um, in my skincare routine that I know has made a huge difference. So I'm super happy about that. But this is where I have the orange pill, wrinkles, scarring from previous breakouts, all of that is all right here. And if a foundation looks heavy and thick and cakey in those areas, it's not gonna look good throughout the day. Okay, so let's go ahead and zoom in on this area right here. You can kind of see a little bit of where the foundation is setting on the skin, and that's where I built up the coverage. So that's something to keep an eye on as we uh, test it throughout the day but it looks really good. I do wanna mention that the only thing that I have on underneath it, I did put my regular skincare on about an hour ago, and then about 10 minutes before I put on the foundation, I applied a thin, even layer of my Charlotte Tilbury Magic Cream, which the Magic Cream is pretty much what I always use for foundation. If I'm gonna test a foundation, that's typically what I use. So it is 11.22 in the morning. Uh, so I'm gonna go about the rest of my day. I will be doing a daylight check-in. I'll take you guys outside, show you guys what it looks like, zoom you guys in real close. And then of course I'll come back later on this evening and we will zoom in real close. But I can tell you that this is a good shade. It's not too dark. It has a tiny bit of a yellow hue to it. So if you have an olive undertone, that's something to keep in mind. That's it for the application portion of the video. The next time you guys see me, it will be my daylight midday check-in. So I will see you guys then. Okay, everyone, I am back for a midday check-in. It is currently 528, so I've officially had it on for six hours now. I'm sitting out here on my porch. I kind of looked in the mirror before I came on camera, and I'm noticing that I'm getting a little bit shiny, like right here along the forehead, but it kind of looks a little glowy right now. I wouldn't say that it looks dewy or oily or anything like that. It just looks a little bit glowy, which I'm fine with. It looks pretty good six hours later. It looks really pretty in the daylight. The shade looks really good in the daylight. I do feel like the shade is a good match. It's a little bit lighter than some of the other foundations that I have. And in the swatches and comparisons, I noticed that I was swatching it next to the Chantecaille Future Skin Foundation, the one that's in the little tub. And it's really close to the shade Shea, which is the shade that I wear from Chantecaille, but in the flash, the undertone was a little different. But without the flash, the shades look really close together. Um, but you guys will notice that in the swatches and comparisons. Just keep your eye out for that shade and that picture because I think that was the closest foundation shade that I have personally to this one. It's a little bit lighter. 
than I normally wear, but I'm fine with it because I think it looks really pretty and I don't dare go any darker. It's a little bit yellow, so keep that in mind for those who have olive complexions. Let's go ahead and zoom in. And you can kind of see the only thing that I'm not liking about this so far is it's a tiny bit heavy in this area. And this is the area that I built up the coverage, if you remember right. In the application, remember, I did mention that how a foundation wears along my chin is kind of my tell if it's going to be a good one or not. This one has a tendency to get a tiny bit cakey. That's the reason why I feel like the application is key with this one. Do not go heavy with this because it will not be pretty. You could kind of tell the way it dries and sets that it can probably get cakey pretty quickly. This is what it's looking like here on the forehead and it looks really smooth and flawless along the forehead. But I mean, I get, bo I get Botox on my forehead, so, th so that's not the best testing area because I do get Botox, but I don't get anything here. This is just my natural whatever. I don't get any treatments along the chin and that's where all of my texture is and come up with some of my acne scarring that I have. So if a foundation's gonna wear bad in an area on me, it's gonna be on the chin area. So this is the side that I built up that coverage and it still looks really good. I built it up a little bit on this side, but more so on this side. And you can kind of see it's a tiny bit cakey, like right around the mouth but it still looks really beautiful, you guys. Like I'm still pretty impressed with the way that this is wearing. The other thing that I wanted to point out is that it does have a little bit of that ambient glow and I didn't notice it when I first applied it. And if you guys have ever used the ambient powders, you'll know what I'm talking about. It's a subtle glow. It's not really that noticeable, but it just gives the skin that soft glow. I didn't notice that on this foundation when I was wearing, when I applied it, but now I can definitely see it. So as it's worn and my natural oils have kind of come through a little bit, this has definitely started to show that ambient glow. And I started noticing it, especially right here in this area, because if you guys have watched me for a while, you will know that my normal routine, I will put a foundation all over, I will put my bronzer, my blush on, right? And then I will set it all with my hourglass setting powder. And then I will put a little bit of the Charlotte Tilbury finishing powder right here in this area and right along the center. I always like kind of smoothing out this area, but I obviously, I did not do that today. I did not use any powders on this other than uh, bronzer and blush, but no powders. And I don't really feel like I need to add the Charlotte Tilbury right here in this area because this looks really pretty and it really smoothed out the pores. So this is kind of the area where I have a little bit of the enlarged pores. I don't, I wouldn't say that enlarged pores is one of my issues. I have a lot of skin concerns, but enlarged pores is not really one of them on the list. But this actually, look. I mean, it looks really pretty over the pores. So the reason why I bring that up is because one of the claims on it was that it would do that blurring effect and it kind of does. It kind of does, I'm noticing that. But I'm actually really liking the way that this is wearing. And I'm curious to see what it's gonna look like later on this evening. Right now as it stands, six hours later, I really like this foundation. And I think it looks really beautiful. It really looks gorgeous. I'm really impressed. And like I mentioned, I have not been impressed by an hourglass foundation for a long time, but this one I am actually really, really liking. So I'm kind of excited to see what it looks like in the next six hours. But for now, that's it for this check-in. You guys are going to go ahead and jump into the swatches and comparisons where I swatch shade seven and nine next to a bunch of other foundations that I have. I swatched a lot of foundations. So, you know, if you guys are interested and it's not your shade, just skip through the swatches and comparisons. Um, and then I will jump back in here on my 12 hour check-in and I will zoom you guys in real close and then I will get into my final thoughts. So I will see you guys then.
Okay, so I am back to do my 12 hour check-in and my final thoughts. Right now it is currently 11.38 p.m. So I've officially had this on for 12 hours and I have so much to say about this foundation. But before I get into my final thoughts, I'm going to take my camera off of the tripod. I'm going to zoom you guys in really close, show you guys what this is looking like, and then we will jump into my final thoughts. Okay, so I went ahead and taken the camera off of the tripod. I wanted to zoom you guys in really close and I can't do that when it's sitting over there in the tripod. So let's go ahead and zoom in on this foundation. As you can see, I'm a little bit shiny, but oh my gosh, I think, I think this foundation still looks beautiful. All these hours later, it looks really pretty, but I'm sitting in front of beauty light, so of course it's gonna reflect more than it would just in like natural lighting. But I mean, the difference is, even though it is kind of shiny this many hours later, it's not separating and pulling away from the skin. Oftentimes when I have foundations that get shiny, they, they will literally separate, especially right here in the center of the forehead. Or if I go to touch it, I will completely remove the foundation. This one, I can touch it and it doesn't go anywhere. And I'm not removing the foundation as I touch my face. So even though I do look a little shiny, Remember, I didn't apply any translucent setting powder with this foundation, so I wanted to briefly touch on this. I was just editing my daylight check-in earlier, and in that portion of the video, I mentioned that the one thing that I didn't like about it is that it was getting a little bit makeup-y around the chin area. I wanna make it clear, though, this is on a small level. Because I'm reviewing the foundation, I'm gonna bring up everything, like good and bad, right? This can, get cakey if you're not careful, which I'll get into that in my final thoughts, but I've had foundations look much more cakey in this area. Uh, and I don't feel like it's that bad. I don't really feel like it's that bad. So let's go ahead and zoom in on it. It might be a little bit around this area, but it's not that bad. I've had foundations look much worse than this, especially foundations that are natural finish leaning matte like this is leaning matte finish i've had foundations look much worse than this in this type of finish but over here on this side this is the side that i went ahead and built up the coverage and i think it still looks really good you can kind of start seeing some of my scarring kind of coming through but it's not that bad i have lost some of the coverage right around my nose area i'm looking in the monitor by the way but you can see i've lost some of it in you know from doing this with my nose or whatever but that's to be expected 12 hours later um but the one thing that i did want to mention is that I still feel like this foundation is giving me that diffused look that because like I mentioned earlier, I didn't put on any of the Charlotte Tilbury finishing powder, which is normally what I do right here in this area. But with this foundation, I don't feel like I need it. This foundation does such a great job over pores and it does kind of diffuse that area. And you can kind of see that even though my skin's a little shiny, as it's reflecting off of these lights, it does have that ambient glow to it. Some of the spheres that they were talking about in the description of the foundation, you can kind of see it start to come through, especially sitting in front of these lights. But I think this foundation looks flawless 12 hours later. It's kind of no joke. In fact, I almost feel like I could go another six hours. So I can see this being a 16 hour wear foundation, which is kind of mind blowing. I do hope that that close up was helpful. Let me go ahead and get into my final thoughts. So far, I'm absolutely loving this foundation. It is a very unique formula, and I don't feel like this is gonna work for everyone. I feel like this is a very specific type of foundation. If you have dry skin, I don't think this is gonna be a good match for you. Uh, if you mix it with something, I think it might. So if you mix it maybe with a tinted moisturizer, something that's really hydrating, because this has so much pigment, this would be a nice mixer to mix with a tinted moisturizer, something that gives you the hydration but also gives you good pigment. So I don't know that I would recommend wearing it alone because it kind of is a borderline matte finish. So kind of keep that in mind. 
you cannot use very much of this foundation. This can go bad fast. So it has to be applied the right way, especially over wrinkles, textures, uh, any type of situation you have. If you go in too heavy with this, I have a feeling it will go bad fast. It will kind of go the other way where it won't look very good and it won't wear very well. Because I applied a thin, even layer all over and then just built it up a little bit in the, in the places that I felt like I needed the coverage, this has worn absolutely flawlessly. This is probably one of the better foundations that I've tested in a very long time. And I'm kind of blown away by it. I love the way that it looks right here love this. It does have that ambient glow. And like I've said, I didn't notice it when I first applied it because it does kind of dry quickly as you're applying it. But boy, as your oils start to come through this, you start to kind of see that ambient glow kind of pulling through the foundation. Gorgeous foundation. Absolutely gorgeous. I do think that this will be a nice foundation for those who have normal oily combo skin. Um, it just looks flawless and it wears so beautifully, so beautifully. But I cannot stress it enough, be so careful with the way that you apply this. This is a very pigmented formula. You just cannot use very much of it. So if you've bought this foundation and you're struggling with it, I recommend using less. Let's say that you put it on and you still feel like you just can't get it to kind of push into the skin and look skin-like, take your sponge and spray it with a setting spray or a hydrating spray. So this is just the Hydra Enhancer from Elsie. I love this one, but you can, you can spray it with any setting spray, anything you have, kind of dampen that sponge, push it over top of the foundation. It'll kind of break up any of the patches or any of the problems that you're having Maybe it's drying too quickly. It'll kind of break up that drying effect in order for you to kind of push it into the skin. But for me, this is a five out of a five foundation. It is just beautiful. It's so beautiful. And the fact that I don't even need to wear powders with it, you guys, Hourglass knocked it out of the flipping ballpark with this one. So gorgeous. I do think that this is a, a foundation that's better applied with a, uh, with a brush because it is that natural kind of matte finish where it kind of dries and it kind of buffs into the skin. So I feel like a brush is definitely the best way to apply it. It's not one of those foundations that's going to be a very no makeup makeup kind of look, right? This is a foundation that is not for those days where you're doing a no makeup makeup kind of day, right? This is a foundation that you're gonna wear when you're going to you know, a bridal shower or you're going, you're going to be gone all day and you're going to be in and out of the heat and you need your makeup to be kind of locked and loaded. That's this type of foundation. If you can, I would recommend going to the Sephora and swatching and finding your right shade. And I don't know if they've started giving samples again, but if you could get a sample of it, that would be best because it is $58. But I would recommend swatching it in store and making sure that the shades are right because I have noticed that even though this is a warm tone, it leans yellow. And I saw a few reviews on the Sephora website where they said that the neutral also leaned a little yellow. So kind of keep that in mind for those who have a neutral undertone. I would see if you can swatch this and try to get shade matched um, because the shades are off. That's my only complaint about this foundation is that the shades online are not what they are in real life. You saw that when I put up shade nine on my hand next to what shade nine looks like on Sephora's website, they're completely different colors. That's my only complaint about this foundation is that the shades are off as far as in the images and especially on the models. That model has a darker complexion than I do. There's no way she's wearing the shade. There's absolutely no way because it matches my skin perfectly and my face is lighter than my body. And yeah, I do have a little bit of a tan now, but still, there's no way. It, it just, it's kind of mind blowing to me. Um, but the shades are a little off. Uh, I would go based on the description of the foundation and not so much the pictures. That's just my, that's my complaint about this foundation is that 
the images are off compared to what you actually get in real life. That's it for the video. Sound off down below. How many of you guys have picked up this foundation? If you have, what is your thoughts on it? I'm so curious to hear. Are you guys loving it as much as I do? Or did this foundation not work for you? Please let us know in the comments because I always love hearing everybody's opinion on it, especially if it's different from mine because everybody's input is so important, especially when it comes to complexion products because we're all so different in what we need from our foundations. So share with us in the comment section down below your thoughts. Thank you guys so much for hanging out with me in today's video. I hope you guys all have a wonderful day and I will see you guys all in my next video. Love you. Bye.